awesome track, eh, Adam? Your neighbors would hate you if you played that at 3 in the morning. <laughs> well, I, I think they'd hate me if I played it at 3 in the afternoon, too. That's when they're more likely Maybe. to be home. I live in an unemployed neighborhood. Ah, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... That track I wrote last night and recorded it in GarageBand. So that proves that like anybody can make music. Hint, hint. If you're a musician, you should send me some stuff. So GarageBand, that's like a video game, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where you're in the garage and you're uh, chasing ghosts. I think I have that on my <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> so anyway, that uh, uh, I called that, that track very cleverly. I called it Break because there's like no words to it. And uh, uh, but it's all my voices in there, so that's kind of crazy, right? It's great. It's it, it's adequate. Um, and if it's not adequate, you should go to my website, which is ideasbyelliot.com, and I'm gonna I don't know what I'm gonna call it. Probably the upload button or the artist button, and click on something that looks like you should submit your stuff there, and then submit your stuff. You're gonna write a fancy online upload submission form thing. It that won't take me that long, but. Oh, that's right. You're the web guy. But don't tell people that because then I can't charge him very much. (laughs) (laughs) Just like I out you and I'm like, he works really cheap. (laughs) (laughs) So today I'm here with Mr. Adam Funk. Good morning. And uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And it is morning, which is uh, not always the case, but it's morning right now. And uh, no one would know if it wasn't. Well, I know. Maybe it's nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot after dark. So what's funny is I had Rhonda on and I had Randy on, mm-hmm. and I I guess I was always saying Rhonda's last name correctly, but I didn't think I was. Randy's last name, I thought I was say, like, there's only one way to say it. You would think. <clears throat> and he's like, no, it's scano like channel. Hmm. And I've always said Scannell. I never knew. Right. About, I didn't. Because you read it and you don't call people by their last names. Very right. often, unless you're Brian Danzinger, then you do. I've been calling my last name all my life. Probably. So how do you say your last name? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the easiest last name to say and the hardest to forget. It's Funk. And if you say like Funk, <laughs> then, then you'd be wrong. <laughs> awesome. It's like the music. It's it's like funk. So oh so so that track that I played, I originally started out I was gonna write a love ballad for one of the tracks. I thought I'll do a that slow. It sounds like a love ballad. I'll do a slow one and then I'll and the and like and then I just go crazy and all of a sudden it's not that. And then I'm like, <laughs> Okay, it's not that. I to- totally I had like you know, I, I had like on the on Garage Band, I don't know if you used it, Nick, but like you can like strum the guitar. I had some beautiful music and I'm like, this is horrible <laughs> so you wanted to play a love ballad for our intro this morning well is there something uh, you should tell me <laughs> so it's a- actually this should be the time we do this we should out ourselves <laughs> <laughs> no no uh, we'll save that for the next show well it'll be kind of weird because like it, you know we don't there's one every week but like we're only on episode three and on episode zero i did have gina on so like there you that go that'd be kind of weird it would be. <laughs> <laughs> and Max is like, please let me escape. <laughs> so this is the first time that with Nick, I have Max in the uh, in the control room. Oh, and we didn't take a selfie yet. We're gonna we didn't. Have to, we will. We'll have to do a selfie like in the middle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll do that when, when you're giving your spiel. Do you, sure. do you happen to have a selfie stick, a.k.a. the wand no, of No, I had, no, uh, when we went to Six Flags the other day, they confiscated it. There's a big sign that says, no <laughs> selfie sticks. <laughs> like, I can just imagine they had to put that up because somebody went on a roller coaster and had one. <laughs> you just know that's yeah, why. They're probably. not, the, they're the worst, aren't they're, they? They're, well, Six Flags? No, selfie sticks. Oh, um, how so? I, I think they're just ridiculous. Me too. <laughs> I totally don't think they're awesome. So I I got one, right? <laughs> because we're thing. geeks. I, like, Adam's thing. like, Murr. I have acquired a selfie stick. Yeah. I went to Chicago and visited friends, and they wanted it because they hadn't seen it yet in Chicago. Nice. Because this was a while, you know camera store connections man right so i had the selfie i was the first guy to have you a selfie the prototype stick. selfie stick yeah but i took it down to chicago and they're like oh my god this is amazing i need to have this so you started the craze i guess yeah Nick. i hadn't really seen them until i was in europe and they were all over the place oh they, yeah i heard that like, yeah they're actually ridiculous. a huge thing out there it's bizarre yeah so all right enough of that right 
people are gonna be like, "Really? Are you gonna talk about Salvi Six for an hour? Did you seriously you just look at your your many time pieces? <laughs> <laughs> it is five forty one. I, I got a I got a news alert. Oh boy! Yeah, I looked at the news. Uh, so that was something that Aziz Ansari. Did I say his name right, Max? It's pretty close, right? So he was talking about that where, um, like, uh, you know, phones are like a drug. Like, that's the whole like thing. A drug. And, like, if you just get rid of the phone, you don't miss it. But if it's there and it buzzes, you're going to look at it. <laughs> there's, all, there's all these studies about people right. who are, like, you know, so addicted crazy. to the uh, the the feeling in your pocket and they get the phantom pocket vibrations and crap. I totally get that. I totally get that. Like, and then I'm like, I'll see my phone there and I'll be like, what How the? is that happening? It's weird <laughs> that you know you have a problem when that starts happening. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and I have a problem. I started all of that. Oh, so you started cell phone addiction? No, well, you're you're sort the of. I was yeah, I was creator. kind of, you know, kind you of You were the creator of the cell phone. Yeah, addiction. I was kind of addicted pretty early on. I mean, I was not the creator like Mr. Selfie Stick over there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, in all fa- fairness, I mean, I, it was but a I'm product. Like, I I got into it early and now I'm like I think I need to be the first to to admit there's an addiction problem and and kind of move away from that now. Yeah. I need to lead the lead the parade. You should open uh, Elliot's uh, cell phone addiction <laughs> rehab center. That's awesome. That's super awesome. See, there you go. That like as a gag, that'd be super all, fun. All these people lined up in front of the building with bandaged thumbs. <laughs> no, you just have a Help. you just have a you just have a, a white room with nothing in it because you know like you're overstimulated. You have like no nothing. You're just like in a room. So all right, we're here with Adam. Enough of my addiction talk. <laughs> uh, this is fun. We're here with Adam. And uh, so my first kind of question that I ask everybody, I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit, but uh, why are you here? Uh, I imagine that the same answer has been repeated by most of your guests because you invited me. <laughs> uh, okay, that's true. But, right. So I just wanted another venue to talk so about. So you, li- you haven't listened to anything else. You're a very selfish creator. I did listen to Randy's yesterday. Okay. So then you know. About halfway know through and then I get interrupted. Uh-huh. I got to go back to it. Yeah. So... So, like, why are you here? Like I said, I, another venue to talk about myself. So you like talking about yourself. It's all right. A lot of people don't. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people, like, I have to, like, oh, come on, you can do it. Well, yeah. I'm a sales guy, so yeah. talking comes rather naturally to me. So talk. Why are you here? You're from Green Bay? You've, I'm from Green Bay. Yeah. So grew- you've been here the whole time? I, here in the studio the whole time? Yes. Because <laughs> it was, wasn't a studio for very long. That's so. the difficulty no. with that intro question is people assume you mean the studio. I know, but that's why it's sort of interesting to see how they react to that, though, too. Is it, <laughs> is, is it annoying? No, it's a great psychological question. I don't find it annoying, but it is definitely a psych experiment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're testing them to see how, how open box thinking they are when they walk in. Sort of. Yeah, because then I, that kind of helps me like adapt. Maybe I'll just be naturally good at that someday and I can move away from that question. <laughs> Everyone will know, all three listeners, <laughs> all three listeners will know when I move away from that, that I've learned. There you oh, are. Thank God he stopped asking <laughs> that question. <laughs> Well, you know, if people would just answer the question. Episode 72. (laughs) Randy kind of did that yesterday, too. Like, I'd ask a question, and then, like, he'd meander into something, which is great. Like, that's really what I want. My my questions are just arbitrary, right? But, like, I'm like, you know, if I actually wanted to know the answer to that question, I don't think I got an answer. (laughs) No, I don't think you did. Well, he is a politician, though. So. I know, and I, we, we teased him about that a couple times. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like, actually, when we got off, when we got uh, done with recording, he he said something. Oh, because on 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 mic, he's like, I have no secrets, and then and then he's like, I totally have a secret, <laughs> <laughs> which well, is awesome. Which is kind of what I would have expected from him. Oh, you know? absolutely. A year awesome. from now, we'll have him back, and he'll talk all about it. It's nothing, nothing. Bad. I don't even remember what it was. It was no big deal. I don't even remember what it was exactly. It was it was awesome, but I'm not going to say it without oh, permission. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. Right, it builds, was a yeah, secret. Build suspense so, for the listener. Good job, Nick. You've I've read done the book this before. You've read the book. <laughs> I didn't read the book yet. So, so more, why am I here? Yeah, why are you here? Tell me about. Tell I, me about I, like uh, just you know the uh, elevator pitch of where Adam came from and got to this point. Well, that could be a really long story. Yeah, I know. 
so we don't, we don't it's want not it to be that super exciting. Long. I grew up in Green Bay. Yeah, I lived on the east side, moved to the big west side after I graduated high school, and that's where all the cool people live. That is where I would never live back in the east no, side. I I'm love not. being on the west side. <laughs> it's great. That is where all the cool people live. You can never be mayor now. <laughs> we'll we'll annex the city again and, and and be Fort Howard one more so, time. So I uh, I do want to hear your story, but I have to tell you this little anecdote. So um, we were at something. Uh, oh, like last year, I think at the at the on Broadway like annual meeting, I, I said something about on Broadway being the cool part of town. And he's like, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we have one downtown, and I'm like. But that's actually totally my job. <laughs> kind of. It kind right. of well is, yeah. Right. So anyway, anyway. The West Side is cool. That's where you're at. <laughs> I love being on the West Side. It's great. I, I love being close to the river. I love being walking distance from anything that's happening anywhere. And it's just uh, – it's kind of neat to be in that old neighborhood and see all the old houses and all that, that beauty that's, you know, built into – the architecture and the structure and so you live in an older house i do yeah my house is from the 30s nice yeah nice so i think our house is a little bit newer than that where it kind of became like too old to be new but not old enough to be um so you live in the ghetto yes so you're like my neighbor <laughs> <laughs> a little bit i mean right. we don't live far away right i don't think i actually know where you live uh, well, I can't tell all of my millions of fans where I live, but I'm also on the west side. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you know, Max is all like uh, dressed up and looking awesome. And he'll like he'll get all there'll be like a line of girls around the block. Wow, he's a stud. We can't do. You that. guys would never get any sleep. That. Can't do that. Well, between I know. between writing songs at 3 a.m. and why do you th- <laughs> why is it automatically that people think when you when you do a song that it's at 3 a.m. because we all know you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's that's a that's a good point but uh no it was like at seven or eight o'clock i did it like in the packer game when it when i got a little bored with it i'd mute it and then i'd record a piece but i really didn't need to you know i i didn't do much vocals so i didn't have to mute it very much that's good <laughs> <laughs> well, you know if it sucks then you should get some of your musician friends of which I know you I have ne- some. I never said it sucked. You should have them submit some clips to me. I know you have I, some musician will, uh, friends because I you do have some musician friends because you invited me out to see your musician friend. Yes. and he was awesome, and he didn't give me any clips. Well, he's a drummer, so if we gave you, I don't care. Gave you anything that was just. We him. only need thirty seconds. <laughs> he could do a drum solo. He could just do a drum solo. He could do Inagata de Vida. Uh, the thirty second version. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we, should we move on from that? Or you got your, more you want to you want to talk about? No, it's your show. <laughs> it is your show. Your you, what does it say right here? Episode, uh, three, episode three. Adam. Funk. Adam Fun- oh, you spelled my name wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else sees these yet. This guy's good. I know. I know. But we we didn't even we didn't even cover anything yet. No, yeah, we yeah. haven't completed question one. So I I kind of like for people to know a little bit about you by the end of this. Well, you I, know we can have I, fun, but you're you're not cooperating. I'm just having fun with you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so does Max have a button where he can just cut Adam's mic? Uh, we can give him that. <laughs> <laughs> where I just go. So, so, you should, so what you're saying is I should get back on task and no, I don't. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. But uh, uh, just so you know, when the clock strikes, then Nick has to break in with his amazing stories about what's going on since yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have time to make News. that 30 second <laughs> spot. I promised you yet. Well, I know, I know. But whatever, we can do an abbreviated version. It, it'll be all good. You have lots to talk about. You do amazing things. You, you know, you should actually mention some of your other things you do. Well, or, not or not a, during the sponsor segment. Oh, you're not allowed to. Because Camera Corner is helping you with your show. Okay. I just happen to be part of Camera Corner. Okay. So we'll have to mention that a different Right. Part. He could be. Yeah. I mean, I could do a show if you want. Yeah. Ooh. Well, who's going to run the thing? I can do both. Well, that uh, so we'll talk like we are right now. <laughs> right. And then if you try to interrupt me, I'll turn your mic off and just keep going. Are you saying that I have a problem with that? No. No. <laughs> Other people say that about you. I don't say that about Who you. Who said that? I don't know. We only have 3 listeners. I, you've implied it on the show. I've heard the rumor. Uh, yeah, rumors, right? Rumors. You know how rumors are. Yeah, I, oh, I'm well aware of how rumors are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, yeah. If only people would talk about the truth instead of the rumors. <sighs> it's true. You got any rumors you want to talk about then? I don't. I really don't. He's actually really a horrible guest. Why did we do this? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I asked Randy all sorts of political questions. You want to talk about any political stuff? Well, we could we could go back to the first question yet, since I didn't successfully. Well, you answer. seemed like you didn't want it. You were you're being dodgy. <laughs> No, I just you're practicing your politician (laughs) skills. I was totally practicing my politician skills. (laughs) Okay, I was curious about the the direction of of you wanted what you want to go with that. You know what? It's your show. All right. Well, no, I I grew up in Green Bay, as I said, lived on the east side, moved to the west side. I work on the east side again. I work over at Diamonds and Gold. Nice, good place. Slinging jewels, slinging plug for you know my store. That's what you should do. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I've I've done jewelry for quite a long time now. I actually hung out with uh, one of my old coworkers, former coworkers. I shouldn't say old because she's not. She chastised me last night for that. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you introduce her? As I that? said, "Oh, this is my old friend Mary." <laughs> no, I'm not old. Right. <laughs> You're gonna learn that. I, I, that's a dangerous thing. I've I've had to learn that. I learned things the hard way. Old is now erased from my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm gonna learn that one quickly. But uh, yeah, I've been doing jewelry for like 14 years, 13, 14 years, and uh, I've now got to the point where I've got a, a few letters after my name. And I know. What are some of those? You got some I like am, thing this last year. I did. Uh, la- this last year, I got my certified gemological appraiser title from the American Gem Society, which is a very- Say that five times fast. Certified gemological appraisal title. I think I can. Yes. Wow. It's a very prestigious- I almost did it. Uh, <laughs> And I have to pronounce it that way, prestigious. Um, oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, title, there's, there's for those, five For, the, for those that are pretentious. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's five people in Wisconsin who share that title with me, who also nice. have that title. And there's like 400 of us in, in the world. So it's kind of a big feather in my cap. I'm well, tooting my since, own horn, absolutely. Since we're bragging about ourselves, I happen to be number one on Quiz Up in Wisconsin for really? three categories. I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, I don't know what a gemologist is, okay? <laughs> Boy, way to hit me when I'm down. What, why did we get this guy, Nick? <laughs> hey, you picked him. You don't get to blame this on me. That's that's your job. It's your show. I just produce it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's not involved in the vetting process at all, is he? He can't even let me spread rumors. Uh, Dang. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Gemologist. Gemologist. Yeah. I also have uh, my graduate's degree in gemology, which... Wow. For the listeners who don't know what that is, is the study of gems. I, I can uh, grade, appraise, identify, tell you what something is. You put a rock in front of me and I can figure it out. So what, what kind of Apple Watch from. should I get? You shouldn't get an Apple Watch. <laughs> See? Good Always answer. ask questions you know the answers to. Good answer. <laughs> you shouldn't. <laughs> Unless you wear it on your other arm with a really cool watch on, on oh, your really? proper arm. Yes. Yeah. So it's an you accessory. It's not so you watch. have a really cool watch, and I know this is audio, so nobody can see it unless we take a selfie. We could. <laughs> I'm posing so, with my so watch. So, like, up. what's a good watch? What's a good watch? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It depends on how much you want to spend. People buy watches? Lots of people buy watches. I've this only, is a common misconception. I've only that, ever that had my mom like, buy me watches. Really? Or someone that's not me. <laughs> I've I've had people buy me. This is why I don't have an Apple Watch because I'm like nobody will buy you one. Why would I want a watch? I don't even understand. (laughs) See, and that's the weird thing. So I'm I'm not a jewelry guy at all. Yeah. However, the one thing that I've been saying is I would like to get a nice watch, a nice chronograph watch. Yeah. But now we have to compete watches against smart watches against Uh like my fitness band. I have the Runtastic Fitness Band. So now it's like functionality over appearance like yes i still love the look of a good tag hewer you know chronograph but this does a million more things yeah it's, it's a tough is? balance between what do you, know, you have on there I, I have a uh, a rolex explorer 2 on there oh nice watch i, I it's, assume it's i watch. assume it is i i have it's a two time zone watch I've i have heard it of set it. to uh my my friend in germany his time zone so i know what time it is when i call him oh up. that's pretty cool yeah yeah you can't do that with an Apple Watch, can you? Actually, you can. <laughs> and it's probably a lot less expensive. 
<laughs> See, and that's the thing. That's got to be disrupting your business, I would assume. Or are you not really in the watch business? Uh, I am in the watch business, but uh, it, it's it's kind of funny because... I bet it's increased a little bit because people are it, talking about watches. It brings more attention to watches. And an Apple Watch, I, I don't really classify it as a watch. It's more of an accessory. It's, some, it's an add-on to an existing product where... I think that whole idea of somebody buying a, like you said, a nice fancy chronograph, um, there's a traditionalism in that. People like something that they can interact with that's right. not a technical, I mean, I'm a techie guy, I'm a gadget geek too, but I like oh, that. Oh, are we going to have to own him, Nick? <laughs> Let's not go there. We'll, we'll wait, could, for, we we'll wait for my episode. We could go there. <laughs> uh, but, I, you know, I like that interaction with something mechanical, something that somebody built that's that's got precision, that's, you know, it's a small motor it's the same thing as a guy who likes classic cars or you know right it's that harken back to something that doesn't really exist anymore okay so i'm going to ask an amateur watch question so does something like that have a battery in it no so that's just you have to wind it no it actually has a really it's cool counterweight that as you wear it the weight spins around for and real? Winds itself yeah oh um, that is pretty cool mm-hmm. i'm telling you man yeah okay mm-hmm. But it's all mechanics. It's all, you know, an engineered machine that somebody put together. It's the simulation of perpetual motion. Exactly. Wow. For real. So you guys all know, am I the only one that doesn't know this? No. (laughs) There are lots of people that are gleefully ignorant. I'm happy and ignorant, but... Yeah. uh, Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Gleefully ignorant. They're happy and they I'm not happy that I am ignorant. I'm happy being... Fine. You guys in, in the state of. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You know, I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> All right. So uh so I like talking about Green Bay. Yeah. Um and you mentioned you have an older house, you like being able to walk to all the cool stuff. The cool stuff. What's your favorite thing here? I really love the fireworks. Yeah. I kinda geek out about that. I bring my yeah. kids down there and do the whole fireworks show. And to be on the river right. for the fireworks, what what better place is there to be than that? Lambeau Field. Yeah, that's pretty no. cool. But the river—they used to do it at Lambeau Field. Do you remember that? I do. When it was yeah. the Shopco fireworks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When we were young, a long time ago. <sighs> yeah, we were just talking about that <laughs> right before the mics were hot. So <laughs> probably while they were on too. Probably. <laughs> and you were like, you guys should be recording this right now. This is gold. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember that time when I right. wasn't recording? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Always the stuff that's not recorded is the good stuff. We're like a we're like a band. You were recording it. I'm I'm sure you were. You didn't. You don't know all their under underground stuff that they had before they were popular. You should record <laughs> all that and release it as a B side, the podcast B side. <laughs> no, no. Max For is all yawning. The kids that are old enough. Max to know what literally a yawned in my face. <laughs> he literally did. He d- he did the yawn face. All right. Ouch. So you like the fireworks? Anything else? Anything cool? Or just the lame stuff? Uh, uh, no, I like no, all I, I like the, the tall ships. I, I've got kids, so yeah. you know I like the kid friends. No, I love the like the tall ships and and farmers markets. Fantastic, yeah. obviously. You know, on Broadway plug. Um, yeah. I I really like a lot of the events that are going on, and I'm I'm so excited about the new stuff that's happening, like the cannery opening up. And, and Have you been there yet? No, I was actually going to try to do that this morning, but I'm here instead. Oh, way to do that to me. Wow. This, well, now you this have to go with me. This is more important. Now you have to go with me sometime because I haven't been there yet either. We'll leave here and go get lunch. Uh, yeah, maybe. If we get out of here in time. Well, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So you mentioned on Broadway, you are on the bid board. I am on the bid board. So what the heck is that? Nobody knows what that no, is. Nobody knows what it is. Yeah. It's it's a group of people that meet in secret and, and spend all the district's money. <laughs> so I I thought you'd have a little thing to talk about. You're not supposed to crack jokes because I was drinking my water. Though. <laughs> and I almost spit it out right at you. You would have ruined and a mic. No, I would have ruined you and you would have deserved it because you knew that. <laughs> no, for real. So, uh, I mean, that is sort of for real. But well, like, uh, Yeah, it is yeah. sort of for real. So uh, we, we allocate the funds to, you know, the, you know, the funds that are collected by the, the – businesses in the district to allocate them to the different projects that are relevant to improvements in the district and and what uh, the businesses want what the neighborhood wants and try to find the best need and so i think i think most people aren't aware of that so on broadway and in downtown in general like the businesses pay into 
their funding for their Correct. events and their organization for promotions and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And I think people don't know that. So I wanted you to say it because you, you're more eloquent. I try. Yeah. I am a salesman, remember? Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> I know. So, uh, no, and you did a good job of that. But I, I think that is something that people really, I mean, it's kind of boring to talk about funding mechanisms. But, uh, but, it is, I, but, but I think that is something that people, because it is, maybe it's not exciting. That's why people don't know about it, right? But uh, I think they don't give enough credit to the uh, the businesses that are in these districts. I think it is exciting because it's a, it's an avenue for additional things to get accomplished in that particular district that you wouldn't have if you were just in any other neighborhood in the city. Right. It's a way to make that area special. So what are some things you're working on over there on the bid board? Well, it's been uh, a little bit of a break since we're on summer right now and doing farmer's market in, in, in that season. Um, this is actually when we're supposed to do our budget. Is it really? It is. Yeah. Well, you'll forgive me because I started in December. I know. Bid. I know. So I kind of set you up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, jerk. <laughs> no, it, really. In August, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be uh, determining our budget. September, it's supposed to be finalized. And uh, uh, either September or October, depending on when the meetings are, um, we have to get it to um, planning commission and to well, city council. we are council. meeting next week. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. But like we have to all agree and that doesn't always happen. And I have a feeling there might be some disagreements coming. <laughs> just, just saying, just putting that just, out there. Just, just, just saying, like, I don't know if you guys know, but we might not all agree on everything anymore. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Any more on that? Well, I was going to say that aside, yeah. it is exciting to be part of something yeah. to, that is promoting a, a betterment of the district and my ambition and the reason I became a part of it in the beginning was to you know impact the neighborhood around it to, to try to you know find that cohesiveness between the neighbors and the businesses and and make it a mutually beneficial situation because you live because I live adjacent to that district yeah. so you know I wanted to encourage right. businesses that would be things that you want to go to things that kids want to go to yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. So, uh, you have any specific things you want us to do in the bed? Do I have yeah. any specific things? I mean, maybe you talked about those things in the secret meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and and for the record, they're totally not secret meetings, unlike other. No, they're uh, absolutely not secret. Unlike meetings. other like joke. other on Broadway meetings, like all the other on Broadway meetings can technically be secret. My other meetings not secret. Well, but it it. It isn't a public meeting. It's not required to be public. No. So that's what I mean. Like it's it's, it's like literally the opposite of a secret <laughs> meeting. So for the bid, we actually have to give notice, and people have to be able to know to show up. Because the open meetings laws. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just want. I don't want. I don't want anybody. Uh, uh, we don't want to start any rumors. We don't want. Any, <laughs> we don't want any rumors. <laughs> so I keep taking it off track. So that's like right. any uh, uh, any big plans for that. Like any, for for you, from your perspective, like from, from are we doing anything good there? Are we doing everything wrong? Uh, uh, I, you know, I'm. It can always be better, and that's why we're all there is to try to make it better. But I'm really happy with a lot of the accomplishments that we've made. I know that one of the big things in your back pocket was the uh, the planters, and yeah. I think we finally did the right thing with that. Yeah, and that was a long time coming. Wow, really? Because I mentioned the cannery yeah. already, but I'm really right. excited about that whole. Uh, Title Town Campus. That's yeah. everything going on there. It's awesome. So, uh, so I had Rhonda on mm -hmm. uh, two times ago, uh, and you have, if you didn't listen to it, might be, might you might be interested in it um, because uh, where she's notable is during the whole Walmart thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was fresh to the on Broadway Board of Directors, and uh, relatively, and uh, but I'd been in the district for a million years, and so I'm like. I understand that Walmart had the only offer, and mm -hmm. so I would, you know, try to explain that naively to to the media, and uh, and I'm not poking fun at them because it really was like I was willing to talk about it, the pros, and she was willing to talk about the cons, but like we are uh, not as divergent. I'm much more in favor of having what we have there now than, than a Walmart. But I also I was, didn't want um, on Broadway to go broke. <laughs> I was ever the pragmatist in that particular circumstance. I, I had a lot of people ask me, well, what do you think about Walmart? Because it was the big contentious issue of, of you know downtown Green Bay. But like you said, they were the ones at the table. 
they fit a need. And as I said before, I always wanted to encourage right. businesses that fit a need for the neighborhood. They definitely fit a bunch of needs in that neighborhood. And, you know, we had enough at the table. I think the smartest thing as a board and as, you know, a, a district to do would be to entertain that well, they were literally the only offer. Exactly. It wasn't like, well, we have this good offer where they're going to give us a lot of money, and we have this really crappy offer where they're not going to give us a lot of money. There was literally no other offer. Exactly. So I'll like, be the first to say, <laughs> Walmart is not my pick. No, I, no. I'm not a I'm not a big Walmart fan, but hey, they're sitting down with us. They're willing to talk. Let's at least see it through to fruition and see if it, we can make this work. So yeah. that's where I came in, yep. and I did sit down with the architects and the design committee meetings and and try to help them see what we needed and what we wanted from them to fit into the district. Ultimately, it didn't work, but... If they would have done a two-story building, we'd have a Walmart there right now. Like, that's what it boiled down to. I'm glad that we don't have a two-story Walmart. No, I... Ultimately, I am too. And I and I said that all along. Like, uh, uh, 30 years from now, we might have an abandoned Walmart because it, you know, doesn't work in a downtown. Yeah, but we'll but, all be gone, so it doesn't matter. But, but it might take 30 <laughs> years for things to be developed to the point that we all envision now too. So right. like we got to play the long game with that now. We, we don't have a choice. Like that's what we have. Of course I was um, kidding about being gone in 30 years. Tongue in cheek, you know. Uh, I tried to ignore that. I tried to not <laughs> want to do the math on that. Well, I'll be very young in 30 years. Well, with all the medical advancements, we, we should be, right. you know, right. just fantastic. Right. Uh, well, notably the Apple Watch. <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll, we'll be half... Uh, in 30 years, you'll be able to buy an Apple Watch locally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everyone at the Apple store in Milwaukee, I I, I, I venture there frequently enough that, that we have this discussion. And uh, they uh, they say, why do, I don't know why we don't have a store in Green Bay. We hear that all the time. There's good so, reasons. I know there is. <laughs> they actually... Um, they actually had a program to protect a certain yeah. degree of their resellers, right. which was recently dissolved. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yes. They had what was called Apple Specialist Stores, which we aren't. Okay. Um, we, we don't fit the category because we sell too much Windows alongside our Apple. But if we eliminated Windows, we would be like one of the top Apple specialists in the country. The, the thing was, if you were a certified Apple specialist, they wouldn't build within, I think it was 75 miles. Oh, really? There, it was something like that. Um, so Appleton has Computer World. Right. Green Bay has Camera Corner. Yeah. We were kind of protected against an Apple store. But um, the latest news that I've heard is they're much more interested in the population density in China than they are in the oh, United States. Oh, well, right. Right. I knew that was the case. Yeah. yeah. Well, if we take a, a, a snapshot of Green Bay, too. And I always find this funny when people make commentary about, oh, why don't we have this or why don't mm-hmm. we have that? It's Green Bay. I mean, there's so there's a, a small enclave of people with some exciting and progressive ideas. But as a whole... So we aren't the market. I think a lot of these people. You know, are I think this is kind of a common theme with everybody that uh, that maybe I'll ever be talking to. We all have this like uh, we all. I include myself. I love my town. I bleed Absolutely. green and gold. But I'm the first one to be critical of it. And I don't know if that like uh, I say like a lot now too. I have to stop that. Gina pointed out I have these words I use. And I, so now I'm now Your I'm fillers. Uh, yeah. Maybe I just need to breathe heavy into the <laughs> microphone instead of having filler words. <laughs> and uh, I don't even know what I was talking about now. Never mind. <laughs> you love your city. You love your city. You're gonna, but that's you're it. to be critical. That's, that's, that's really it. That's, that's the long and short of it. Yeah. Well, I think because we love our city and we're so invested into it, we see the shortcomings and we see the successes and we yeah. are realistic about them. Well, and I think that that gives some people the wrong impression like that we like that we don't like it well, i think it, it from my perspective it's because we care yeah well it, because we want to imp- impact that yeah it very much I is mine but uh we all talk about how uh you know randy talked about it uh Rhonda talked about it like you know wanting to potentially you know escape um and from my perspective the only thing i really want to escape is January and February. <laughs> I just <laughs> hate it here. And uh, I, I would like to go south. That's all. Just for those time periods. So, and I know lots of people do that. We could bank on global warming. I have been. Improve the climate. I here. have been. I, I, I don't have a new car. I try to drive it extra when I can. We have a grocery store nearby. I refuse to walk. I'm like, no, we're going to get this warming. Oh, thing my done. car runs the whole day. I'm at work. It just, you know, <laughs> chugs smoke out into the atmosphere. 
I want to heat this baby up here in Green Bay. So, I can. so did you hear about the, 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 the canine dog yesterday? I did. That's really sad. So I, I'm not, uh, I, I don't, I, I, I didn't listen to any more of the details and maybe they explain this, but how does that happen where you felt like you needed to bring the dog, but you decided to leave the, like, even if you have the air conditioner on, you leave the co- the dog in the car? I, I, I feel bad at, at I don't the irony of it that. because, you know, everybody gets in trouble in the summer months for kids and dogs in the car. And it's it's the big, you know, it's Facebook right. brouhaha. Yeah. And then here we have a news story about a canine dog in right. a police car that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's sad. I, I don't. It is. It's just sad. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm not critical of the person. They were probably no, doing absolutely. Their, I'm not making that. I'm statement. sure the reason it happened is because the person was doing his job. Maybe her. I don't know. His or her job. Right. But like, I, yeah, I, I know so little. I don't even know who did it. Yeah. So uh, we can you can break in and you can give your little. Uh, uh, not little. It's actually big. It's a big deal to me because I wouldn't be able to do this without Nick. <laughs> I would be I would be lost. I'd be on my iPad trying to do this in GarageBand. So, well, ahead. we're you know at Camera Corner Studios as you saw earlier and have heard if you've listened to the show before. We are a studio available for your use. Whether you need a little bit of help from a technician or whether you're comfortable just working on your own, bringing your own equipment, uh, we can really fit your needs. Uh, on an individual basis so uh, the way we work we have the room the lights the backdrops the sound deafening equipment that's all included in a standard room fee and then if you need cameras or microphones or technicians or or other technology such as a teleprompter or sound mixer or edit bay whatever um, it's all a la carte so we can start helping with your project for as little as $65 an hour. Now that could be anything from a, you know, photo shoot up to multi-camera live streaming video. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, opportunity on things we can help with and we'd love to help you out. Just give me a call at uh, 920-272-0148 and I'll get you, you set up. You were totally ready. You know, I know my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm not going to lie. I'm amazed at how many people don't that I talk to. <laughs> I really am. I have to actually think about it. I, I don't know my landline number. Uh, yeah. I, you uh, have a landline? Uh, well, it's through my cable provider. Ah. So it's kind of landline. Right. So I'm sorry. Did you have more you wanted to throw? No, there? not at all. Okay. I really I really don't like doing the live plug, but I, I, I need the exposure. So I, I, actually, I actually like having you do it because I think this place is amazing. And I like literally, I would not. Got to stop saying like. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> literally. I would not have, I wouldn't be able to do this without you. Well, so. and like I said, I think your show is worthwhile and, and you know, so nice. your guests are always entertaining and informational. Like, yeah. honestly, here, I, I hate to admit this on the, on the, I, I almost said on the air. <laughs> we're, there's We're air. on the air. I, I hate to admit this on Mike, but I had never met or heard of Rhonda before she came on your show. Yeah. But I am extremely familiar with her work with the Walmart Absolutely. situation. Yep. So, I mean, this is informational and entertaining for me just to, to be here to witness it firsthand. Nice. You know, that's that's all I want. Right. I, I have cool friends and I don't get to talk to them enough. And I'll probably subscribe just so you have the number, too. But like I hear it even without having to listen to the recording. See, I, I think I'm going to have to subscribe as well since <laughs> since I'm on here now. Uh, well, see, I kind of want to listen to Rhonda. So that's the trick. Rhonda was great. Yeah, she yeah, was. She really was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know it, it was great because we uh, we got to talk about that because she is like minded and she wants to talk to people from the other side and I want to talk to people from the other side. I'm I'm actually not confrontational. It turns out <laughs> um, I actually like to collaborate and talk to people. It, it's it's funny because you alluded a little bit to to uh, you know politics and the lefts and the rights and yeah. I think a lot of that goes away when you're talking about. On a, on a city or you know civic level, absolutely, it doesn't really matter as right. much that you you don't have those big national stage type well because issues that you can even deal with. Well, here. mostly because well, not always, but I think um, uh, like the things we deal with on Broadway or even downtown, usually they're finite. So I I think yeah. of it that way. Like uh, so, even people that are very conservative, like oh, I don't want to spend public funds. It's like it's oftentimes it's one and done. Right, you're not setting up this like this uh, welfare state. You know, I think some right. people would characterize that. And then, on you know, on the other side, um, I don't feel like th- uh, anybody who's more progressive, I think that uh, they feel like they have a voice and they, they can explain it. And 
bring people along with them that maybe ordinarily wouldn't. So I, I, I love my city a lot. As I said before, I find myself as ever the pragmatist, and yeah. I mix with a lot of different people of a lot of different political inclinations, and I tend to try to find the best idea in the crowd. I mean, I have my own political leanings, especially on the national stage, but uh, here locally, I I want to find who has the best and brightest idea and why and see if we can't make that work and, and so, find a, a good way to, to make it happen. So you mentioned you have a friend in Germany. I do have a friend um, in Germany. So do you talk to this friend about things like that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We talk politics a lot. So I'm always fascinated what other people think about our country. So, you know, what is what does this person think? Well, he he's kind of got this this uh, nostalgic love affair with America. Yeah. So he's a big fan. Uh, but of he's course, from here. No, he's from there. Okay. He, he grew up in Hanover. We were uh, good friends in high school. He was a foreign exchange student, and nice. We're very like minded, and we just That's hit it cool. off really well, and yeah, became lifelong friends. Uh, but yeah, we do talk about this stuff a lot. Obviously, being from Germany, from Europe, they they do tend to be a little more left, a little more mm-hmm. progressive. So some of the things that I might get hot and bothered about, he's like, oh well, that's kind of a no big deal here. <laughs> you know, it's like really you're, um, but you know, it, it's it's a little bit removed. Yeah, I always think of Germany as being the most like us here. They really know, are in the U.S. Even and not just like here here but like in the u.s i feel like they they have, they have a, civil, a lot of the same economy. struggles i think yeah. but maybe but maybe not as much i don't know they uh i know they like to suck at the grease <laughs> 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 i don't know what that's all about but yeah it seems like uh there are some very divergent viewpoints on that whole thing i don't know if you follow any of that uh, a little bit yeah a little okay. bit so tell me a uh, cool story like a downtown story green bay story Work story. I don't care. It's your show. Oh, Tell cool me a story. story. Ah, there's so many cool stories. Uh, it's his show, Max. It's my show. It's, it's this my is show. Adam's show. Just so you know, he does say that to everyone. I know, but one of uh, you know, n- Nick always tries to get them to commit to that so that he can get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not necessarily trying to get rid of you. You just kind of alluded the other day that you know. You weren't so good. Wow. The other day was, of course, the only time you've ever said that. Yesterday? You weren't and so good at? <laughs> at doing this. Oh, I, I not think a, it's fine. Not a skilled journalist. I'll have to go back and nerd. listen and see how bad it is, but it seems fine right now. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I think. But it's, your, it's your show, so I hope you like <laughs> it. He chose the word fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I know that's like the dirty word. If, if, if I'm going to be sexist here. You know, if a woman says she's fine. Oh, that's like oh yeah. my god well You're it's all about trouble. inflection is she fine or is she fine, fine? well if i say if she's fine if there's you know, that's a totally there different needs to thing be breath then. attached to it right either at the beginning or the end fine how was your day-to-day dear fine, fine. yeah that's dangerous or the, like yeah that's scary fine <laughs> fine. <laughs> i wasn't meaning that your show is fine <laughs> it's fine it's great Story. <laughs> Story. <laughs> I'm uh, got to stay on track, Adam. <laughs> Nobody's going to want to listen to us pretend to say fine over and over again. Maybe they will. Maybe. Maybe Maybe we'll hit a certain uh, fetish group <laughs> that's really into that. Or they'll just laugh at us. Well, who are these jokers? Whatever. So you know that there's like a YouTube thing where people can like pull up videos and they can listen to, what is it? Like, like just... Uh, People breathing or something. There's something super weird. You know what I'm talking about, Nick? I am very familiar with. What it. is this thing? ASMR. There's, yes, yes, ASMR. Yeah, it's a thing. Like, pe- like I've never heard of it. It's bizarre. It's super bizarre. It's very strange. Yeah, look it up. We'll have to. Yeah, look it up. I, yeah, I don't. I don't even want. I don't. Yeah. No. no weird. No. Well, you should look it up just so you know. You want to be knowledgeable. That's dangerous. When you or you want to be up. gleefully ignorant. <laughs> I prefer to be gleefully ignorant on that one. It, it's dangerous when you when you look things up. Sometimes you Google. Oh, somebody says, "Hey, Google." I don't this. need to. Nick knows everything. I just say, "Do you know about that?" And he's like, "Yeah, I know all about that." No, what I just have computers in front of me. It happens to stand for blah, 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 blah. <laughs> multiple computers in don't the control Google room. That. <laughs> <laughs> don't look that up. Not so with Max in here today. So you don't have a cool story? No, that's why I'm delaying because I I don't really have a really? cool story. Well, that's cool. I mean, I, mean, what, I have lots of cool that's okay. Stories, so I like I so like I did it again. See, now I'm very aware of that. Mm -hmm. It makes me crazy. So um, I don't don't give everybody, 
like questions ahead of time. And, right. and I've been kind of waffling on that, whether I should or not, so they can have something ready or not. I kind of prefer well, a not. cool story question would have been a, I wanted to have ready. I know. And uh, I have cool stories, just not something I could specifically pull out about, oh, on Broadway or, or down. No, it doesn't or, have know, to be that. that. Kind of stuff. Those are just topics that we kind of talk yeah. about. And I've talked about with the other people too. Because we're Green Bay people. Yeah. yeah. So, but it doesn't have to be that. You have a cool, well, my, another my cool story. Well, my cool story, my, my good friend, yeah. Mike, the, the Germany guy, yeah. is bought and sold like he wants to retire in Green Bay. Crazy, obsessed fan of Green Bay. He loves it here. Wow. He uh, So much so, he's traveling to visit me next year. He's going to be staying at my house for about, about a month with his family. This will be very telling. If Adam goes radio silent on me, I know exactly what that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, instead of buy, uh, instead of renting a car and spending all that money, he wanted to buy a uh, cool car. So he found on Craigslist down in Omaha, Nebraska, a 63 Biscayne wagon. That's what he wants to drive around. He's a big old car collector. So it's in my garage right now. He had a friend from high school pick it up, deliver it to my house, and he's going to turn it into a Packer wagon for himself. Oh, my himself. God. I love this, man. I have custom plates on it already called uh, that say cheese curd on them. It's insane. And he's got all these vintage 60s Packer stickers. He's so what, what, what's Germany guy's name? His name is Mike. His name is Mike? His name Michael. Mike, yeah. Isn't it like... Mikhail. Mikhail is actually how he pronounces <laughs> yeah. it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. But Mike. Yeah. So so Mike. he's this obsessive Packer fan. Well, I'm he's obsessed with Mike. Around. I'm obsessed with Mike. I'm going to hunt him down. And you I'm can sure, meet him. And I'm sure I can You'll find like him. him. I'm sure I can find him. Probably. I'll just Google Germany Packers. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a section of of the Ring of Honor from Lambo hanging in his house. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So he loves green. He bleeds green and gold. He loves green. Bay. Like I, I did like again. Oh, I got to stop that. <laughs> um, and then I did um instead. Oh, this is, this is just the not going to work. The are just it's not going to work. I'm not nervous. I just, I am incapable of producing sounds that sound like words. <laughs> <laughs> you said like again, but it was in a more acceptable Well, that format. makes sense. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, I get confused when there's people that live in other parts of the country that are Packer obsessed. I mean, I would be if I moved to, you know, if I moved to Austin, I would only want to go there a few months out of the year anyway. I think it's, it's the, just the weird. mystique of the team and being, yeah. being owned by the, the citizens, the city, you know, being one of the oldest or the oldest team. And it's great. But e- I equally get annoyed when I run into somebody in town who claims to be a fan of something else. I'm like, that can't be. It's kind of a prerequisite. You can't like the Vikings. It's on the application to be a... And like should be banned in, in conjunction with the word Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense why you'd like the Vikings. I can understand maybe you like the Bears because you were in Chicago when somebody threatened to kill you. But everybody in Minneapolis is nice, right? I, I get know. I get people liking the Bears. I, I've got family from Chicago. I don't get and, that either. You know, so it's it that, that fun sense. banter and rivalry. <laughs> I'm okay with We that. even have a song explaining why you're not supposed to do that. I, I'm not saying I like the Bears. I you said you I understood get it. it. I get it. I, it's almost as bad to, to understand them. <laughs> it's fun for me because if somebody didn't like the Bears, there would be no rivalry. Oh, no, I, I get that. Yeah. But uh, why why are there uh, we have we have Cowboys fans around? Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> or uh, and if you if you are a Cowboys it. fan from Texas, what the heck are you doing in Green Bay? Why are you here? Why did you come? Yeah, yeah. You know, January, February. Hello. Well, especially if they're going to you know complain about the one thing we have that's awesome, right? Know, which is sort of an implicit complaining, right? By saying yeah. I prefer this other thing. I don't know, right? What do you think, Max? He yawned again, didn't he? Hold the mic up. Oh, yeah. We got to get Max on the microphone. I think Because obviously Adam is a big, this is a big failure. We're going to make it Adam and, and Max. <laughs> <laughs> Not a football Ooh. fan. Ooh. You so know, Max uh, is my adopted son. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, when I was younger, I didn't get the Packers. I really, I, 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 I was upset that they made me late for work what? because of the traffic. But see, you're, I don't get, I don't, that I don't get because I do get, because I think Adam and I are about the same age. When I was Max's age, the Packers were horrible. Yeah, th- that too. Yeah. But you're a little younger though, aren't you? 
That uh, was, that was yeah, about Magic 10. Johnson younger. Or, 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 uh, That's a Domikowski lot. And all that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, but Domikowski was sort of like the beginning of the resurgence. And yeah. So, like, wow, how do you not, I don't know, I don't know how you can be surrounded by all of that and not be. Honestly, I remember people saying that the Magic Man was good. Yeah. I don't remember seeing him play well. He was okay. But, I mean, we've been blessed with in probably two of the top five of all time. <laughs> right. I think people said he was good because we had been so miserable before that. They're like, oh, right. well, this guy's good, finally. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and he, he and he went on the radio and played Poison songs. Right. What? <laughs> you don't look at that. You could probably Google no, that. No, I don't, I don't remember this. Yeah. Google Don Mikowski and uh, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. Hmm. Yeah. It was on the WIXXs all the time. Hmm. And no, I didn't listen to it every night, but like, I have heard that when I was a wee lad. You had your cassette player ready to record the top nine at nine. Oh, God. That's what it was called. That's what it right. was, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't think of the name because uh, MTV had a thing like that, too. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, I uh, didn't do that often, but I did do that. And you'd yell if somebody else came in the room and started talking, shut up, I'm recording. That was the fun part because then I'd like beat the hell out of my brother. <laughs> I don't even remember which brother would have interrupted me. I have four brothers. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I have four brothers. They all live in Green Bay now. My uh, my one brother who moved to Milwaukee to teach moved back just this last weekend. So yeah, cool. Kind of excited. We got the we have the band back together. We can we can go back to our our plan for uh, citywide domination. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, we're kind of, we kind of got off track. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's fun talking. We're, to we're you. having fun. So. Um, but I, in, I want, I do want it to be about you. So I, I want to kind of, you know, get to the inner Adam a little bit. So, uh, are there other organizations you're, you said you're involved with on Broadway? You're on the bid. I'm on the bid. What I'm other on, stuff do you I do? chair the design committee and I am the secretary for the Brown County Republican party. Okay. So what kind of stuff does the secretary do there? Uh, take minutes for the meetings and it, it's very so secretary boring. stuff. Yeah. Secretary okay. stuff. Well, we have a secretary for the on Broadway board and. Up until this last meeting, that wasn't the person who took notes. <laughs> very odd. That is very <laughs> odd. Anyway. I, you know, like I said, I like to be connected to, to things happening around me. I like to, to influence stuff in, in, in a good way and, and try to, you know, I don't want to be the guy sitting in my chair complaining about whatever's happening around me and not doing something about it. So right. I feel like if I can actually step up to the plate and and do something at a higher capacity than just voting or complaining then so i think we set a kind of a high bar with our first four people because i think that's a common thread with uh you know everybody else that i've had on to so that's pretty cool like the, i don't think everybody put it in those words which is even better but well i think we're all kind of like-minded we care enough about what's happening around us about yeah. our community to, yeah. to make a difference right um Okay, so this is the question that I always kind of fumble with, but it's a good question because okay. I think it kind of gets to things. So people ask a lot of times, what scares you most? And I think for most people, like if they're being honest, what scares them most are things like death and public speaking. I know I'm afraid you're not of heights. So you're afraid of heights. I, I but I actually am more interested in getting to <laughs> at the I, – I used to be afraid of heights until I, I just said I'm going on roller coasters and I conquered that. Um, <clears throat> but – and mostly, like – there's still heights that probably, you know, give me like the, the jitters, right? But uh, so um, the flip side of that is what do you think is something that scares a lot of other people that you handle completely fine? That's a better question because it's hard to answer what scares you the most and be, you know, that without vulnerable. being cliche. And also without being yeah. cliche. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I tend to have a, a bit of confidence coming from being a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a lot of people who are afraid to do the public speaking or afraid of, you know, being rejected or, or failing at, at something, but that's never really been something that I've found for myself. I, Is that I why like you keep texting me? I'm like, I told you no, Adam. <laughs> I just want to hear your song. It's 4 a.m. You must be done by now. <laughs> no, that's interesting. So, uh, so the whole... Not that I like it or I embrace, you know stumbling or bumbling or failing but but you don't mind doing things even if you might fail right i i like i i enjoy the challenge i enjoy yeah. the risk and you know it's you kind of have it's a sales thing you kind of have to you have to put yourself out there and ask for this the clothes ask for the sale mm -hmm. and if you're afraid of failing or you're afraid of somebody saying no well you'd right. never do that then right. and you wouldn't be a very good salesperson right. so right. that transcends into the rest of my life i i like to take on challenges and nice. you know take the risk and that's good 
yeah. throw the dice a little bit. So that's um, that's interesting. You know, and I'm like try. You know, so I ask some of these same questions, and I kind of mentally am trying to go back and hear what everybody else said. And it, like all the answers are different to that. So I, I like that question. Um, that's a good question. Yeah. I, and, and the way you pose it is, yeah, you should well, keep that one. Uh, yeah. So, well, I crossed out a bunch of other ones, and I don't have good ones to replace with them with. So, like, I have to, like, I did the like again. It's really horrible. It's okay. Can we bleep those all? <laughs> <laughs> you can. Bleep. <laughs> I will gladly give you an MP3 file for bleeping. That would be amazing. So then everyone thinks I'm saying something else. You could edit it out, and then you'd have to add 15 minutes to the show <laughs> to cover all the likes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, okay, so another good thing is, I, 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 so not necessarily a story, but what is something that other people would be surprised to learn about you? Uh, so Randy said he liked The Clash, I and mean, I was surprised, but yet not, to hear that. I'm secretly a huge Trekkie. Okay. See, I like, didn't know that. Big time, yeah. Really? I've got the tones in my phone, and I've got my little Star Trek family on my car. So you watch sticky. all the odd-numbered movies? I enjoy the even number of movies as well, but yes, I love all the odd number of movies. Oh, yes. You're a horrible person. I dressed my kids up as Cap- Captain Kirk for uh, uh, Halloween. They were both Captain Kirk? Well, uh, don't, the green, don't, don't, don't the green ladies get confused? <laughs> <laughs> when one was too big for the outfit, then the other one got it. So. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually cooler to have two Captain Kirks walking down the street. That would actually, Wouldn't that be awesome? I think that'd you be could awesome. paint the you know the goatee on the one, and that would be the the evil the one, evil one, the yes. evil twin, the, the evil twin. twin. Did, I, I remember, I remember Kirk, not Spock. Spock had, had one, yeah. but Kirk did not, right? No, I he, don't think so. I, I don't. Was there an evil Kirk? I I don't remember. What kind of a Trekkie are you? See, I gave there's him a, a, I gave him a, a softball lot. question, and he failed. He he swung and he missed, <laughs> but he's not afraid of swinging and missing. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Okay, that's actually that's that's pretty cool. So the uh, uh, I uh, I listened to way too much stuff, and then I get confused as to where I heard it. But somebody was just talking about um, some of the Star Trek stuff the other day, and um, oh, they were talking about the last Next Generation movie and mm-hmm. how horrific it was. They they did kind of get bad as as they came out with them. Yeah, oh. I prefer the old. Oh, I grew up watching it, right? So, so you the like stuff the old I, stuff? Yeah, I like the old stuff. Yeah, you know the older movies and the TV shows, the next right. generation TV shows. So I started watching like some of them are on Netflix. So I've been kind of binging on some of those. And, it's good stuff. And well, on the newer stuff. So like I like whatever. I have some Voyagers, the one right now. And, yeah, and it's mostly horrible. Yeah, that's not my favorite one. That's I'm certainly like, not. There's a reason I didn't watch these the first time. <laughs> I yeah. like the social commentary that the shows carry, though. Yeah, and they all kind of have that, but they all kind of come at it from uh, a a place where you're saying things that I don't necessarily agree with. You know, they'll make some, not always, but like they'll make some statements. I'll be like, it's sort of eye rolling sometimes, you know. Oh, yeah, you're going to have that. it's so though. overt. So, uh, all right, like two questions, I think. And that is sort of a like, like to, like to. There's, be there's right? like to. Okay, so um, and we kind of talked about some of this stuff a little bit, mm-hmm. but uh, so what are you looking forward to over the next twenty years? And you threw a thirty year thing out there, but like, <laughs> I think twenty is a more like uh, manageable time frame or ten or whatever. whatever Personally, you say. or or uh... all. Like so, what? So what are you, what are you looking to achieve or do? What do you think for our little town, for the world? Well, personally, I'd love to thoughts. continue on the path that I'm on. Yeah, you know, and and continue which to which pursue. is what? So are you? So you're one of only five people in the state that are a certified general certified appraiser. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And uh, thanks for filling that in because no I would have fumbled over that again. Um, but what's the next level for that? Have a store. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I mean, I, I definitely want to become a big deal in my career. Locally so you're here, entrepreneurial. You know. Yeah. That, okay. that would be important to me. Cool. And there's, there's a few avenues I could do that in. I, I can't really say much on air. Oh. But. <laughs> I bet you could bleep that. <laughs> yeah. Again, you can bleep it. I'll give you a file. Oh, no. The, but kimo- that's the kimono is open. That's a pursuit that I, I want to continue. Cool. Um, and, and on the same level, you know, I, I say politically, but 
I don't really mean politically, but just to to continue to give back to the city and, and to be involved in in whatever capacity that I can to you know impact my neighborhood and, and right. my city around me. I love living where I do. I love being on the on the near west side, and I want to stay right where I'm at. I I'm nice. so happy there, but I, I want to as I'm sitting there do something that makes make things more makes awesome. it better. Yeah, so that totally makes sense. So, um, anything else on? 20 year kind of thing 20 year kind of thing yeah I'd like to see some tall buildings in Green Bay well we're gonna have one that uh, the metro right we go into the, we go up to the Bellin building for some things and like yeah. so we see the progress um, and I think it's gonna be kind of big is it I think so I, I don't know about it I mean big big for big right. for Green Bay right well, I'm like a city but, guy you know my family's yeah. in Chicago I always would go down there and, and, and be in awe of the skyscrapers and I'd come back to Green Bay and everything's like flat so thought, what family Man. do you have in Chicago uh, I've got cousins aunts uncles oh you know. okay yeah because you said you were here the whole time, they're all so. from here so you didn't move there no. oh so they defected. they defected they're all Packer fans uh, in Chicago. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can. Can we? We should. Uh, inf- we. Sh- it's like a virus, right? Right. That's that's how I envision. They're infected, that, right? <laughs> <laughs> they bleed green. They have like multiple Packer bars there. Yeah, they do. There's there's an awesome. There's one a Kroll's there. There is. There's a Kroll's location in Chicago. What? Yeah. A real one? A real one? Yeah. Why is this the first time I've heard of this? You haven't heard of that? No. I think you need to Google it. I, I think you're wrong. The real question is, is it more like Kroll's East or Kroll's West? <laughs> right, right, right. I think it's actually more like Kroll's West, but um, they made a big deal about it being, yeah. you know, the, the Packer. Which is the affiliated. one we're supposed to like. I don't know. I like Kroll's East. I grew up there. I So I did too, and I feel like that's what I'm supposed to like, but now I'm not an East Sider. Well, I still have a quite a few East Side loyalties, though. <laughs> Even though I like living on the West Side, I work on the East Side. Uh, I cross the river every You're sort day. of a... You're like a turncoat or whatever, right? Is that what it's called? You're one of the bad people. Well, I want to be mayor, so I got to like both sides, right? <laughs> Do you? That's a job I would not want. It pay, you know, it doesn't pay well enough for like the long, the ridiculously long hours. I don't think I would really want it. No. Um, and I think, um, I think Jim Schmidt does an amazing job. And, I'm a fan. Um, but even bef- but before him, Paul Jaden. These guys go to everything. What? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Max was already endorsed. Oh, he would like yeah, to be Yeah, so you'd have to run against him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So that's two elections from now. I've got age and experience, but he's got the looks and the ladies, so. Right. Right. The <laughs> ladies will trouble. go door to door for him. Yeah. You're doing I'm toast. <laughs> <laughs> he hits the whole female demographic. <laughs> 50% of the city guaranteed vote for him. And and, and and who am I supposed to vote for? That puts me in a, a precarious position. It does. 51%. <laughs> so uh, anything else I should have asked? I have one more question, but anything else you want to throw in? I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of having fun being asked. Yeah. So. Okay. So the last thing that I ask, and I, this is my favorite question, uh, is – if if I bring you back to co-host an episode in the future, because I kind of look at all these these first ones as like this is all rough and crazy and just having fun <laughs> with my friends, right? But like at some point, if it becomes like a real thing, you know, uh, and you came back and you co-hosted, who would you want to be, you know, sitting in the who would the who would I want chair? in the danger chair? Oh, there's so many good good possibilities. You, you Honestly, I would I'd love to uh, to interview my boss. She's great on the radio. Yeah, Every, okay. everyone knows Christine from yeah. Diamonds and Gold, yeah. and who yeah. does the commercials. Right, she can talk, and, and she's good at karaoke, fun. and she's very good at karaoke. <laughs> that would be fun. So that would be a good one. Um, yeah, it would be fun to interview the mayor, our current mayor Jim. That would be a good one too. Who else would be good? Well, there's a. I, so the, why I first decided to do this is I'm like I'm looking at my. Uh, not the list. I never look at the list, but like you have a number on Facebook of how many whatever friends you have, right? And I'm like, I don't know a thousand some people or whatever, whatever the number is. It was just big, right? Yeah. And I know them, but I don't. Okay, that's weird to say it like that too, right? I totally get it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> 
the, you I don't a, know them. You have, a, <laughs> you have an affiliation with all of these there people. It's a relationship Again, on some more, level. You're more eloquent. You're, I'm going to be replaced. It's going to be the Adam show from now on, I think. I'll be a good co-host. Yeah, I think you would be. So I think I'd either. Well, I mean, you know Christine better, obviously. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, there's some, there I, it, it'd be fun people. to talk to the movers and shakers, uh, you know, and those two people that I listed are definitely yeah. two of them. Uh, Brent yeah. Weicker would be another person that'd be Ooh, fun to talk to. Yeah, Brent's not on yeah. the list yet, and he? he's he's a he's a got a, a a few things to say. He's a pretty smart guy. So, so those are two opposing viewpoints. There, he's a smart guy, and he has things to say. Smart people usually keep their mouths shut. <laughs> <laughs> And I think if they're smart. And I and you know what? He is so way smarter than I am because I don't keep my mouth shut. You know, Gina, yeah, I'm bad at that. Gina too. pointed out that you know, you have no filter and people can either handle that or they can't. And most people can't. <laughs> yeah, I, I tend to talk a lot too. I, I, I can relate uh, to that. Yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I annihilate you on that. So I'll concede defeat. Yeah, you better. Uh, got anything else? Um, I don't. Okay, great. I wish I did. No, come see me at Diamonds and Gold. Ooh, come there you check go. out all our cool stuff. You know stuff. what? I have to be better about that, don't I, Nick? Yeah, you should give people a, a, a yeah. plugs. Yeah. I mean, most of them are savvy enough to work it in. No. No, they're all morons. They're all as as you go on, you may you may find that bad. they won't be as. Have good. you seen the list of people That's, we have coming? It's not a good list. Yeah, that is a long list. No, though. it's good. It's good. I'm just kidding. Now they're all gonna bow out. They're gonna be like, "What did you say?" Forget it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long list. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, you know, give a give a plug. Gold. We've we've got. So where uh, where's where is it? Give yeah, give the thirty second spiel. We're we're in Bellevue. We're not in Green Bay. We're um, behind Walgreens. Oh. Cut his mic. <laughs> we're done. Uh, <laughs> behind Walgreens on the corner of Alloway. And Lime Kiln over by, you know, the new cops and Target and, and uh, there's a couple of salons there, Bravo, um, Adira and Forte are the two salons, Lady Savannah. Everybody knows where all that stuff is. It's kind of like the new Oneida Street. There's a lot of stuff going on there. It's really cool. Yeah, it is nice. It's a, it's a really exciting place to be part of. And uh, we fit right in because we've got a really great selection of really beautiful jewelry. And a lot of the stuff that we have is, is one of a kind, unique pieces. We don't tend to um, replace our stuff with duplicates. We get things that are you know one-off and, and custom created so when you walk in you're really? always going to see something different that's cool and of course i being a gemologist is right on staff we've got a jeweler right in store so we can appraise grade fix repair help your watches you know you name it we can do it there so it's your one-stop jewelry shop that's a catchy catchphrase i just got some uh, my, my my thing just buzzed with something i have to read uh oh! Lay it on us. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, something from De Pere. Ooh. Yeah, I'll hmm. t- I'll tell you once we're off mic. It's that hot. Ooh. I know. Exciting. I know. Uh, yeah. So uh, thanks, Adam. Thanks, Elliot. Yeah, Appreciate we're, sh- it. we're shaking hands. I know it's not on a, on on the camera. Does, well, is that hidden, my cue to play the, on the music? Camera. I don't. I don't know. So, so Gina said that I need to make it more clear that like we're done. But I'm like, well, that's what the song at the end is for. Right. I think so. so that's that's yeah. my. Job. Anybody who's listening probably has an idea. Yeah. <laughs> they probably turned it off a half hour ago, <laughs> or they're asleep. <laughs> so yeah. So this uh this last track I also made. And I forgot the name of it already. It's like why why three four oh why three four because I just said yeah 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 and that's like lead yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ne- so next episode, we'll- n- next episode we'll have the tandem monkeys, which would be way better than this. I did this in like <laughs> that's my voice. 